everybody, Darlington Farm here, just out here in the shop, and we're going to be talking about purge plugs and purging tubing today. So this is a set of uh, purge plugs that I got from purgeplugs.com. This is the second set of these that I have bought. Really like them. Uh, I needed a second set to go in my go bag, so I ended up just purchasing a second set of them. So if you are not familiar with purging stainless steel or why you would need to do that, we're going to walk through that real quick here. So this is sanitary tubing. This is 316 stainless steel, 65 thousandths wall. This happens to be a piece of two and a half inches, polished on the inside, polished on the outside. That is really important because anything in the food production world is gonna be nice, shiny, polished. Uh, basically, so bacteria don't have a place to grow or food can't get trapped in there, or product can't get trapped in there and just cause any place for bacteria to grow, which can cause a recall, which you really don't want to have be, you know, responsible for. So anyway, really on the, the welding, this stuff, really the only thing that matters is the inside. The outside does not matter. Um, anyway, so yeah, basically when you're purging this stuff, um, I use these guys here. This is, uh, again, that set from purgeplugs.com. Basically, it's just a plasticky center hub here with some foamy stuff on the outside and the diffuser. You just shove this in your pipe. You have a, uh, I just use quarter inch poly line and a pneumatic fitting there, chunk it on there. That goes to your dual flow meter. Uh, and then on the outflow side of your pipe, you have one of these pucks, which is a, I don't know, same foamy, you know, squishy silicone matty material with a little hole in the middle, which is real important because if you are purging something and you don't have an outflow and you just have pressure building up in there, you're going to have a real bad day because when you are welding tubing like this, it's not like your traditional like root pass, fill pass and cap. You basically just butt the material up against one another, just like on this ferrule here, no gap. And you do a float. You just float the puddle all the way around here. So what you need when you are welding this stuff, you need enough gas on the inside of the tube pushing out to where as the puddle so you come along here with your TIG torch you know you're zapping it zzzz, right there you've got a trail or like you've got your puddle right here and then you've got a small trail back here of metal that has yet to solidify so you need enough argon pressure on the inside that's higher than the atmosphere out here to where it'll bow out very, very slightly because as that weld puddle cools on stainless, it will shrink back down. So you need enough gas in the pipe to be able to float your weld puddle on. So basically as your, your, your puddle comes along on the outside of the pipe here, it'll look just a very, very slightly raised. And then as you move your heat source, your TIG torch along, it will just kind of fall back in there. So anyway, you need, with a set of purge plugs like this, you need about 15 cubic feet an hour, or 15 CFH. Uh, if you're doing a whole lot of joints, which is basically these guys butted up against one another, I will tape them uh, every joint, and I will start at the farthest point from my purge source here. And then I will work my way back, starting with that last joint, untaping the next one, untaping the next one, untaping the next one. Uh, if you don't, and you have more than say two or three joints, you'll lose enough in that joint to where you won't get a good purge on the very far, far weld. Uh, there's also ferrules like this. This is a uh, really common connection in the sanitary world. Uh, this is just called a ferrule, or referred to as a ferrule. There's a gasket that fits in between them. They butt up against one another. And if, if you can see that, there's a little bit of an angle on there. The clamp goes around here and just squeezes them and squeezes the two of them together. So with this kit here, there's a cool little deal here that basically, I don't know what they call it on their website, but it's just like a tree or whatever. Your gas goes in here, comes out in these little holes right here. And then this fitting here is just blocked off to where this now just acts as a, a dam for your gas. And then so this whole area in between this aluminum block here and the dam up here is purged. Uh, and also this aluminum block acts as kind of a, as a chill plate if you're doing 
a short ferrule. This is a long ferrule here, which is about an inch. I forget what the three inch ones are. I think they're an inch and three sixteenths. But uh, if you're doing a short one, they're half an inch. And so that acts as a little bit of a chill block to where you kind of limit the distortion on the ferrule. But anyway, so it'll, it'll vent your gas back out on the back side of this. And anything in between this aluminum dam and the purge plug there is, you know, shielded. So it's real handy so you don't have to purge out a whole pipe if you're just putting a ferrule on, you know, say like a pipe that's in an existing facility, you just have to replace a damaged ferrule. You can just pop it in here, pop your shielding gas on here, do your weld around the outside here. There's no filler involved in this, it's just simply a fusion weld, so you'll just, you know, boom, all the way around there. And then if you're real fast, when you pull this out here, you can just pull it out and there you won't melt your purge set up here at all, like you'll just pop it out. And you'll have a real nice weld. So that, that's kind of what I do. And again, same, same setup on this, gas-wise, around 15 cubic feet an hour. If you're doing a fit-up, say like a field weld, and you don't exactly have the greatest fit-up, ideally you would have absolutely zero gap on this at all. But, you know, realistically, if you're doing a field weld, not everything is going to line up perfectly. I'll go up a little bit to maybe 20, 25 CFH, but that is about the upper end of what you want to try and do. And a lot of times if I have a real crappy fit up on a pipe like that, I'll turn my gas up. I'll weld that shitty fit up part and then turn my gas back down to 15 CFH or thereabouts and then finish the weld out. Because if you have your gas really high like that and then you come around, say you have a real crappy fit up over here to here. If you start over here, you'll be blowing gas out over here. So as you come around and weld past this point here and say you get back to a nice, you know, sealed fit up, you'll you'll get a pretty predominant bulge right there, which you really really do not want. So basically, what I'll do is I'll start here, you know, work, you know, weld out the poor fit up area and I'll go ahead and turn my gas down. Um, that's pretty much how I do it. I don't know if that's necessarily the right way to do it, but that's how I do it. Um, there's also different schools of thought on the type of uh, the way in which you weld this. Um, I go back and forth between walking the cup, which if you've never heard of that before, you basically take and do a motion similar to this and it gives you a really nice looking weld. Um, if you are welding on a, say a product line that is a really acidic or really salty um, like a salted egg yolk line or salted butter line, something like that. Uh, I have heard, um, and I've not had this substantiated, that if you walk the cup, um, it won't. The weld will tend to corrode or eat before the or burn before the rest of the pipe. I've heard that. I have not substantiated or had that, you know, substantiated. Um, so a lot of places will not allow you to walk the cup on a pipe like that. So I noticed in my last video where I was talking about sanitary welding there. Uh, there were a bunch of people that just said, you know, walk the cup, you know, why would you do it like that where I was just rolling the pipe? There's a lot of places that do not allow you to weld, to walk the cup. So just, you know, if you're new to this, just be aware that that's something out there. Um, anyway, so yeah, once again, I really like this setup from purgeplugs.com. I think we'll go ahead and set this up here and maybe weld this pipe out so you can see how that works. So typically I'll fit this up by hand. Uh, I typically don't use a clamp or anything like that unless it's a field weld in an awkward position. Uh, you want a field that make sure you don't have any step, step over here or high-low. Uh, basically you're only allowed half a wall thickness so this, in this case it's only 65,000 so that doesn't give us a whole lot of room to play around here. So I'm just tacking. I typically tack with lift arc so I've got the welder set at 55 amps doing lift arc. So there, boom, and you just get on and get off real fast. And if you're real fast like that, you do not have to worry about burning through. Do the same over here. Bam, just get on, get off. We're going to go ahead and do this in our positioner. But like I was saying, with poor fit ups, I cut this on the bandsaw and not on the GF saw 
that's what you're going to have to deal with. So that's why it's real important to use a, a George Fisher saw or something like that when you are working with sanitary tubing here. So we'll go ahead whoop, like that. Now we'll go ahead and weld this guy out. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just purge this guy out here. Real simple, that's all you have to do. I just have this poly line running back to my regulator and we'll go ahead and weld this guy out. All right, I need to speed my positioner up just a hair. I'm kind of outpacing it. I hope you can see this okay. All right, I gotta speed up my positioner just a hair here. Cause I'm going a little faster. Now, ideally, if this was a real world, Weld, I'd go ahead and brush, just with a stainless steel brush, my start and stop here, but this is just so you guys kind of get the idea of what's going on. There we go, that's about the right speed. Actually, I think I need to speed up a little bit. Now we got a pretty good gap in here at this spot. So this, I'm gonna try and, oops, I got a little behind. I'm trying to get this in a spot where I can film. So we'll go ahead and catch up here. And then go ahead and start our positioner again. But if you do a lot of pipe, a positioner like this is really nice. Yeah, I'm kind of getting into a bind here. I got to scoot over a bit. There we go. I'm trying to hold things in a spot where you guys can see what's going on and weld this out at the same time. A little difficult. Speed's about right though. This is kind of about the way I like to do it. Probably turn my heat down just a hair. I'm at like 55 amps. And catch up on the positioner. And there we come back around and then typically then I'll kind of go ahead and speed up and try not to melt my whoa melt my hose here but I hope you get the idea of what that looks like all right so not the best not the worst out there basically I was having a hard time getting that you know getting the camera to where you could kind of see what's going on but so you get the idea and uh, yeah, anyway, uh, I'm Darlington Farm. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative and helped somebody out there. Uh, I always just kind of like, you know, teaching and kind of sharing what I do with everybody. Anyway, once again, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, uh, hit that subscribe button, and just tell me what you'd like to see in more videos. Thank you for watching.